now we have a superstar session. Dun, 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 dun. There should be music for that. I'm, I'm just making it myself. Um, uh, and this is this is fascinating. This is this the, the talk of this is is hyper. The title of this is hyper casual ideation. How uh, how number one games hit games are born. I think if you're number one, you've got to be a hit game. I'm presuming it's, it's together. Um, it's, it's a talk about uh, about that. I'm, I'm hopefully yes we have. I'm delighted to welcome uh, uh, Maura Goldstein Torren of our track sponsors. I've no doubt got part of that wrong. Of our track sponsors, uh, Crazy Labs, uh, uh, to uh, to discuss this issue. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Yeah, it, I, I, I said Mora, but it's Mariah, isn't it? Mariah. Mor I do apologise. I, yeah. I, I assumed it was a <laughs> typo. Okay. I, I assumed it was a typo. You're, you're not Scottish. Where are you? Are you, uh, where, are you where are you based? I'm based in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. Is it beautifully sunny in Tel Aviv? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's always sunny in Tel Aviv. That's my experience of television. Every time I go there, it doesn't matter what. <laughs> you have to visit. You have to visit. It's amazing. I, no, I've been. I should be back again. Do they ah. still have? those scooters causing absolute mayhem in the city yeah you've got these like lime scooters everyone's got an electric scooter and they're just weaving weaving and out of traffic <laughs> I, was, I was terrified when i was there but it was uh, it, was uh, it is yeah anyway um enough enough talking about toby beautiful place do visit if you get a chance um yeah so we're going to talk to you're going to talk today about ideation and, and uh where great hit games come from i guess is that right yes yes that's cool. my talk are you uh, are you are you feeling ready are you if you got your yeah let's start I'm, I, you can start. I'm here in the background. If you, if you all right, give me a so shout. Share my know. screen now. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I think that my brain is a mess. Everywhere I go and everywhere I look, I'm trying to think whether I can turn it into a game. And I wish if I could see you are nodding your head now, because as hyper casual game developers, you already know that everyday experience can become the new hit. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here again. My name is Moria, and I'm VP of Creative and Product Design at Crazy Labs. My journey at Crazy Labs started back in 2014, when I joined the company as a studio manager. In the last three years, I uh, built and led the um, hyper-casual publishing team. Recently, I started uh, a new role in the company, which I'm grateful for. Uh, which will allow me to go really crazy with my idea. I'm building a new team and our goal is to push the hyper casual boundaries to the next level. In 2020, Crazy Labs were the top three mobile game publisher and our games just recently crossed 4 billion downloads. That's a respectful milestone. We have 110 monthly active users and our publishing group is actively working with over 350 studios to create amazing games for our players. Among our games, you can find tie-dye, ASMR slicing, phone case DIY, and even run sausage run that was released in 2017 and still kicking. Who said that hyper casual games can live for only a few months? But that's for a separate talk. We're here to talk about hyper casual ideation. In my talk today, I will share with you my personal ideation process, what my inspiration resources are, how I did act the trend, and what's important to pay attention when gamifying it. I will also show you how one idea can become three different games. As game developer and publisher, we are fighting for our players' attention. That's why when we are hitting the road with a new idea for our games, our initial thought should be how to stand out beneath the thousands of games out there. How do we compete with the boobs and the pranks? First thing we want to do is to make them stop scrolling, to pick us. Then we need to make them choose us, okay? I feel that um, we need to do more drastic stuff lately in order to fight on their attention then they need to actually love the game and come back the day after. Our players, they've seen it all, don't you think? As game publisher, we need to be even bolder than we were and to stand on the edge and be super innovative. Same goes for game, de for game developers that need to reinvent the wheel every time. It's either in the game itself or in the UA uh, videos. 
As a woman, I have great advantage when it comes to hypercasual. Over 50% of all gamers and non-gamers on mobile are females, and close to 60% of hypercasual players are females. And I think that by the time Facebook will release their next report, these numbers will increase. Since hypercasual games are made for non-gamers, I'm lucky enough to create and design games for myself. Another advantage is by being part of the target audience, it's easier for me to challenge myself and to check uh, what made me stop scrolling and identify what does it for me. So hire women in your teams. Where do I start? It's super basic and trivial actually. It's the social networks. I'm being on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and more. I basically scroll all the time. Then I stare at my daughters and friends playing games or watching YouTube videos. I learn so much by just watching them. I see what gets them excited and especially what they made them stop and watch a certain video. I also show them sets of game icons to see what they uh, like to, to download for them and they what makes them want to play. I talk to my teenage nephew and his friends and get their insights as well. And it's ca in case it's not obvious, I play all the game in the top charts, all hit mobile games and any other game that I can put my hands on. Um, I also use AppAny, sorry. <laughs> and other intelligence tool and it may seem creepy to you but sometimes i can ask complete stranger when i see them play on their mobile device what they are playing or why or i would just sneak a peek into their mobile device i try to challenge my social media algorithm from time to time with new keywords or cool searches otherwise i'll be still be watching 95 percent of the time uh, acrylic nails or tie-dye videos I try to follow new content creator. I download games that I see in ads and I check what others are following and watching. I'm trying to dance between the AI and my eye. When I see a video that I like, I always ask myself, why did I stop? Why am I sending it to my team? It's important that we will do this self-analysis and notice why did we stop so then we will be able to translate it into the video ad and to the game. It's either something extremely unique, maybe something from different cultures. It will be something disgusting or super funny, extreme things that I can only imagine myself doing. In games, we can make the impossible to possible and that's what's so nice about it. When I'm on my ideation process, it helps me to categorize source of inspiration and it helps me cover all grounds. Sports, hobbies, occupations, animals, or, and of course, mechanics, controls, so I can then mix and match. Now, let's say I suspect a certain video as a good game, uh, game candidate. What should I do? How can I tell whether this is a trend? If I start seeing certain uh, this video again and again, coming from different sources, appearing on different social uh, media accounts, or maybe a TikTok challenge is related, then that would be a good place to start. I'll check it all out. I'll also check the amount of likes and share that each relevant video has. All this will usually point in a direction of a trend, but what really turns on the trend alerts in my head if I see it not just online, but offline in real life. And this is exactly what happened to me in tie-dye, which later become one of our top success stories, just cross 100 million downloads. When I watched the first DIY tie-dye video, I felt it looked super satisfying. And it also reminded me of my childhood. By the second video, I thought to myself, oh, that's so cool. But when I walked down the street and I saw a tie-dye t-shirt in the store window, I knew it's the hottest trend out there. I had to do something now. By the way, the same thing happened to me with acrylic nails. So we have our inspiration and then we brainstorm on what should be the high level design document, which control and mechanic fits the best. 
Um, and, and then we should see if we have clear and intuitive narrative for the game. The next step is always the same. We go back to the mother of all questions. Do people want to play my game? The three seconds rule, remember? Players will most likely to decide if they are going to download your game within the first three seconds of your video ad. So this rule should always guide you through your whole ideation and creation process. Your video ad should scream, I wanna play this game. And I know I keep saying it over and over, but please challenge yourself. Show it to your friends and colleagues, ask them if they understand Check their reaction, their, their response. And I'm not saying you should use cheap tricks. Your game should stand out and shine bright like a diamond on its own. The control, the mechanic should be crystal clear. The goal and narrative should be intuitive and simple to understand. That's what hyper casual is all about. You also need to find the very pure moment of fun, the things that makes the magic happen. We always talk about gamify a trend, but we also need to gemify it, to find the real gem, because that moment of pure fun, this is the diamond in the rough. And, and this can make or break your game. For example, in tie-dye, it's the outcome that came out so nicely, no matter what style or color you choose. In acrylic nails, it was that moment when the acrylic paste turned, the acrylic powder turned into paste. This is gold. From that point, you'll keep playing because it's simple to follow through and super creative. In hyper casual uh, games, those short, small, and sometimes even trivial moments are just what your players are hungry for, a pure fun to play moment. Don't you love example? I have more. I love DIY videos. I can watch all types of DIY videos all day. This is how I came up with the idea for DIY Makeup, the game that we recently launched. I love the fact that you are mixing elements and creating your own makeup products. By the way, never tried it at home, naturally. Same goes for physical tie-dye or acrylic nails. I'm leaving the mess out. By the time that the game was launched, the trend slowed down a little bit and the CPI struggled. But then I started to notice that there's a new related online trend homemade face mask made out of fresh fruit. When I talked to a beauty specialist about it, she explained that makeup sales dropped 30% during COVID, while skincare increased by the same percentage. I suddenly understood what happened to our game, and I also knew what I need to do next. The first thing we did was to replicate it into the, the fruit mask into the video ad for DIY makeup and boom, a 200% increase in downloads. Then we changed the icon and only then we added it into the game. This goes to show you that videos and trend are not only good for creating new game ideas, it can and should be part of your everyday work on existing games as well. Let's talk about your pitches. When my team and I are working on a game, we always pitch it, even if it's for, it's for the internal teams. Working on your game's pitch will serve you in many ways. It will help you gather your thoughts. If uh, you'll need to make sure that you have clear definition of the game. You will need to make, uh, you need to decide if this is the right mechanic and control and making mock-ups or short flow of the game will help you see if you have it all tied up. Once again, challenge yourself. This is the place to challenge your ideas. And don't forget when you're sending your pitch to your publisher, it should really stand out. Publishing manager gets a lot of pitches every day. So your idea, as good as it, as good as it may be, should be clear, simple, and fun to read. Let's have good example and bad example for good pitches and bad. Um, on the good example, you'll see a very short and presentative pitch of tie-dye. You immediately get the idea. 
Uh, it's inviting, it's fun to read. You can already imagine how the game will be. And on the bad example, you'll see a pitch that, has, that speaks on the same idea, but with so much text. And so it's so hard to dive into it. No one wants to actually read. Um, so invest in mock-up and save these words for later. A good mock-up will do all the work for you. In the creation part, one of the things that I love the most is that you can take a single idea and gamify it in so many different ways. If that was an offline event and I could see you and talk to you, I would just ask someone from the audience to suggest uh, a trend or an idea and we can brainstorm together and see if we can find different ways uh, uh, to gamify it. But since we can, uh, unfortunately, I brought my own example. Forgive me for bringing an old trend. I can't burn my ideas now. So uh, let's take the spinner fidget toy. Clearly was a hot trend back then. Everybody talked about it, play with it. Everywhere you walk, you see someone spinning it. So now let's see how we can find different ways to, to gamify it. It can be an I.O. game, a spinner I.O. with regular joystick control. You're fighting your opponents, trying to win each round. It can be a simulation game where you are creating your own spinner. Uh, you choose the shape, the color, you'll be selling it, making money, upgrading your spinner store. Or maybe it can be a draw runner. Uh, you are drawing your path and you need to avoid the uh, obstacles. Um, and, and win this level. So it's always fascinating me to see how each developer and game creators can take an idea and give their own definition and, and touch to it. I also like to learn from our developers and to hear what inspired them. Our friend from Creaky told us that they saw a YouTube video uh, of um, DIY uh, form cases. But when they really decided to start working on this game was when they understood how strong it was uh, in Asia, for example. And our friends from Shoal of Fish, um, they were inspired by a Facebook game that they did in the past that the original inspiration for that was uh, an amazing uh, motion graphic of, of birds and not even fish, but that what made them come up with the idea for shallow fish. And, um, and uh, the guys from uh, Sculpt uh, People, SmackDown's production, uh, they uh, saw a cute uh, online store that sells these uh, awesome uh, sculptures. And then they found uh, this clay artist doing these super satisfying videos uh, that made them come up with the idea for the uh, simulation game that later become uh, a hit. So everything that we discussed today is just part of our training program in Crazy Hubs. We are now opening our fifth hyper casual hub. So you're more than welcome to apply and join us. This is a three months hyper casual bootcamp in Israel, India, Turkey, Serbia, and Poland. So come to learn from our mentors how to kick ass in hyper casual. So we covered a lot of materials today, and I know that each of you has their own style for ideation, but there are three things that I want you to take from today's talk. Challenge yourself. Always ask yourself, why are you watching this video? What made you stop scrolling? What made you download a game? Find multiple ways to gamify a trend. Remember that a single idea can turn to many types of hyper-casual games. Find the pure fun moment. Pinpoint that exact moment that kick you because that's the exact moment you need to gamify. And you know what? You should stop gamifying and start gemifying. Thank you so much. You can go and hear your questions. Fantastic. That was really great. Um, really great. Uh, can we, uh, if you maybe unshare, yeah, there you go, perfect. 
brilliant. You, I can, we can see you clearly. That was that was fantastic, Maria. That really uh, really great energy and enthusiasm that comes through. It's, it's clear how uh, how passionate you 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 are. And I know I know that's something that is common to Crazy Labs as a whole. I know you're a, a lot of young people. I, I feel I've been in the industry a long time. I was a young person. You know, we're actually not that not that young people. Are the average uh, age is is not that young actually. I think you and I might have different ideas we about are, what we are. We are young in our spirit. Young in spirit. That's fair enough. Um. So I've got a load of questions I'm trying try, try, try to, to, to get through. Um, what, one of the questions I'm going to, oh, there's so many here. I'm, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to try and pick through. So one of the things I wanted to ask about, which I kind of touched a bit on with the previous speaker, but as an interesting kind of general topic, especially in hyper casual, is how do you, <coughs> you know, obviously you get inspiration from everywhere and that will include other games. So how do you avoid being you know, just kind of copying another idea, even if you've kind of just internalized it. Are there any kind of how processes we, where you how kind of do go avoid copying? Out? Yeah, how to avoid, or what do you think about copying and cloning? Is it okay? I don't know, there's, there's a lot of different attitudes about it in hyper casual space. I know some people are really, oh, this is terrible. I think that the only thing that is cool is to mix and match. Yeah. And I saw awesome examples of mix and match that made me jealous how great it was because you know, taking two mechanics or a theme and mechanic and mix them together creates an entire uh, different game. So I can't call it copying uh, when you are just taking a mechanic that was <coughs> a game and, and, and you put an awesome theme on it uh, or mix it with another mechanic to create yeah. a different mechanic. So you've evolved it. Yeah, no, it's evolution. Fair enough. I, I think that's absolutely true. I think you can always, even if you look at something and go that's brilliant you can always find a unique spin on it right it's it's uh so i, I like that um you, you mentioned i was i was really fascinated i'm, I'm my eyes my head is buzzing i wish i could make games i'd be out there making straight away do, <laughs> you, um you mentioned a couple of times things like uh, social media and tiktok do, do you do you think that the future of hyper casual games has a strong connection with that those social media both in ideas and and kind of promotion because you're spotting trends and memes and i think I think it will still it will remain part of of the things, but not the main because everybody has their own style. My my uh, initial inspiration always and my best ideas come from social media. But I see so many brilliant games that comes from different sources. So I I don't think it's will go only to this direction it has room for everybody yeah no no i i i don't i'm not saying necessarily only but it's, it's fascinating isn't it if people are following you know somebody falling over with a cake uh, or something you know and, and or, or, or a funky dance and then you can straight away go and play a gamified version of that it kind of feels like it's an amazing market on my weekends i'm like a crazy person keep sending emails to myself i need to do this <laughs> i need to do this. Yes. don't yeah. forget this yeah um, another thing I, I, I share with this, this, this I, I really love the, the kind of the, um, the, 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 straight, the point you made about uh, your advantages as a, as, a, as a female kind of developer or female in, in this space. And, and I'm, I'm totally on board that we, you know, that there should be a lot more, as you said, it's, a, it's more 50 50 or more, even in many, especially in mm -hmm. mobile. And we, should, we need more women in the space. Do, do you think broadening from that, it's important to have a really kind of diverse ideation team, ideation team, like different ages and, Genders, social groups, races, whatever. Definitely. You, yeah. And is that Definitely. something you kind of actively, I, I know it's these hubs are a really great idea. You're kind of going, you're getting that global perspective. I think uh, here in Crazy Labs, we are, I think, 50 50 or even more females uh, than males in the, the, the company. Uh, so uh, we are definitely trying to have diverse teams. And I think <coughs> uh, each uh studio should have at least uh 30 to 40 percent females in in their uh yeah. team so they will have and ages by the way yeah we need to have the range of ages as well so we will you know get what the younger uh, audience uh likes to and what the older audience likes we need the you know i i i spend, I, I, I feel need, old yeah. sometimes yeah i sometimes you know i bring cool and fresh ideas but then then you know people look at me and say oh you're such a boomer i mean <laughs> okay boomer that's a great result. um 
Yeah, that, so I, 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 talking a little bit about this hub concept, do, you know, are you finding you're getting very markedly different ideas from these different countries? I mean, it's, it's a very- Sorry, I lost idea. you for a second. Can you repeat? Sorry, the, the hub, the, the kind of crazy hubs concept. Yep. Are you finding you're getting quite different ideas from these different hubs? I mean, I mean, it's a great idea to to get, you know, cult, diff, you know, obviously it's great. Ideas to from them. games, ideas yeah. for games from the hubs. Are they getting different? Are you getting diff very different types of ideas? So if you've got a hub in Israel. Uh -huh. hub I don't feel this way. I feel, no, that, no, no. I feel that the, the hyper casual is pretty much the same when I'm working with people from India or from Serbia. It most likely to be on the same uh, <coughs> range of ideas because hyper casual speaks the same language everywhere. Fair enough. Well, on, on, uh, one final point on the crazy. I've got a few to get to on crazy hubs. I've got like four or five questions here. Uh, who should I contact to get crazy hub in my country? Would you be interested in launching a crazy hub in Pakistan? I want to have a crazy mm. hub here in Sundsvall, Sweden. How can I make it happen? So, what do, if people want to want a crazy? I think hub? that the best the best thing to do is to get into our website. There is a tab with all the hubs that we have, so you can apply. No matter which uh, uh, hub you will try to apply, someone will get back to you. You can use my email. You can send me on LinkedIn. You're yep. more than welcome. We will be happy to address all of the questions and try to open more hubs, of course. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's great. I, I, we, believe, I... we do believe in physical hubs because, and not just online uh, programs, because this mutual work together with the mentors and, and, and with, in these creative environments just puts everything in different perspective in it kicks it all up. I think it's, you know, when you can really show someone on his monitor what's wrong or what, or to see someone really play your yeah. prototype on a mobile device makes all the difference. So I know it was, this is a, a COVID situation yeah. and everything, but working in the same workspace is- yeah. 100% agree. We definitely need to get back together. Obviously, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, sort of Israel is Tel Aviv is, is very much leading the charge there. I think you're the most most vaccinated country in the, in, in the world at the moment, which is great. Um, but yeah, that will come. I, I agree with that. Um, you've talked about a lot of different, getting loads of different ideas. And you've, you know, from that talk alone, you've had like 100 game ideas. So what's the kind of process or a little bit of, of, from, from going from ideas to pitch to, to I guess to, to kind of mock up to you know to, to then launch I mean how many how many kind of mock-ups or how many kind of demo tests what's sort of, where are, you, are you working on at any one time would you say across across crazy lab is it like hundreds of game ideas have been worked on at any one time you get down to 10 that get launched or something like that or how does that work I'm trying to calculate <laughs> okay. um, there are hundreds of ball in the air all the time. I mean, it's, it can be, an idea can be just one liner. Yeah. It can be just a video <coughs> and then we are processing it, starting to mock up it. And, and of course, working with our developers, uh, yeah. with the publishing team together and see what catches. So we're trying, you know, to, to work on as much as possible and every, so you're putting a lot of games out there and 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 to get that data, I guess. Um, I mean that's that's a that's a that's an amazing. Uh, thing. It's always data. Data, data, data. Yeah. Talk about it in my talk today, but I always have to listen to the numbers yeah. that guides me. I don't fall in love with any of my ideas. Sometimes I'm being a little bit crazy when yeah, yeah. I when I want to find a studio now for this game. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. And what's just as a, uh, it's been a couple of questions, but it's my interest as well. What, what, what's the sort of length of time? You've got a great idea. You've gone, wow, this is amazing. Uh, you know, everyone's juggling sheep now. We need to do a game on this. This is the new trend. Like from, from, from an idea to prototype to, to getting a game out, what's the kind of, what's a typical length of time? Is that, is that you know, weeks, months? You know, how, how, long, how long would you? you... Great. Right. That's, a, that is the, the, this is the one million dollar question. Okay. Because the fastest you'll be the the, the, the success uh, rate will increase in my opinion I mean 
if we can have, if we have a good pitch and we can test it, the, the idea within one or two weeks, yeah. and then we see it has potential, it has good CPI, I'll try to launch it not more than four weeks after we saw wow. a good CPI. This is my, this is my, uh, so within, uh, like less than two months. Where I'm, what I'm aiming to. for. Wow, that's that is short iteration. Yeah, yeah. That's but of course, this is like the ultimate. But sometimes it, it can take three months. But yeah. uh, I'm trying. We're trying to minimize the their production time because competition in the market is on fire. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a very very competitive space. I've, I've got related to that. Uh, there's a question here from. Uh, from Sai, uh, who says, is there still scope for new hypercasual games after so many are released? I mean, obviously, you know, people have been predicting the end of hypercasual for about three years now, and it's just gone on and got bigger and bigger every year. You know, it, I, I, I presume, you know, you, you guys are pretty bu bullish about the future. You're, you're expanding with hubs and everything everywhere. So, you know, is, is it is it still, is there still time to enter this space? Definitely, yeah. Good. Be crazy to say no it's over we got but yeah 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 hyper is here hyper is here no and 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 obviously again it's evolving as well right so you have you know certain it's evolving games, you know, yeah 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 evolving definitely into but i but Come you on. know there was a time that we <coughs> talked about uh, hybrid casual and you can still see that there is room for all types of sub genre yeah. but the level of production value is increasing the yeah. game are becoming better and better and this is amazing in my opinion yeah yeah okay i've got i'll try and get one two more questions i'll have to put you up. so <laughs> do, do you have any tools um uh, to help with ideation do, do you have like i mean are there your own tools or third party tools sure. I, I, we saw recently at uh, one of our events or about uh, there's a thing i think called ludo or something something like that which is a ai tool for game ideation i, I don't know if it's can I you... saw something. I, I'm not using it uh, uh, yet, to be honest. Um, no, I'm, I don't. I'm, you know, I don't don't work for them. But I, 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 I don't know. There seems to be a few starting to emerge. We do. I... We do support our developers with their ideation because sometimes you know you bring awesome idea, but it's not, it's not tied up. It's not fully, uh, you know, uh, clear. So we have <coughs> Y and UX experts to uh, help them. You know. Uh, make it whole and uh, so, but it's a personal um, um, service that we give to our developers actually. Yeah, so, okay. uh, so that's, part, that's part of the, it's part of the, part of, the of the the support that we give. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought so much stuff in here. I'm, I'm going to have to probably, uh, I'll ask one last question. I'm, I'll pull out. Okay, one, cool. I'm going to have to go. If, if you do want to talk to Maria, please sit, sit, stick, seek her, seek her, seek her out afterwards uh, in the Discord or, 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 or her or the Crazy Labs team. Um, so, sure. the question is do you run a lot of game jams? Um, I, I guess I, it's a very simple question. Yes, no. I mean, it's games jams seem ideal way to, to get ideas. I know there's, there's a hyper casual company that seems. We are to doing it in the hubs. In the hubs, yeah. we're doing game jams. We sometimes take a, a theme or uh, we decide on a, 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 a amount of time that we give for this uh, game jam. And, uh, and then all the teams in the, in the hub are focused on, on that. Um, but we didn't uh, have a, a global uh, hyper game jam uh, yet. Yet, but okay. And if you had to leave one passing bit of, of advice or inspiration, I think you're a very inspiring character, by the way, but if you could, for anybody that's a, a game developer that's in this space, getting into this space, what would it be? What would be your one thing you say to someone? Tough one, isn't it? Open-minded, send you all of your ideas to your mobile device so you will not forget about a good idea and find the pure moment of fun. This, because this is, this is what we need. Yeah. The, the gem, the gem of it, the gemify. Yeah, it's the gem, gemify, gemify. I like gemify. It's good. It's a good. It's a good yeah. term. It's going to catch on. Okay. Well, I, I think that's all we we have time for. That was brilliant. Absolutely uh, love that. Really love that. I say I'm I'm kind of now thinking I should be making games. This is much much more fun than running. Come conference. join us. Oh, why not? Hey, um, we're hiring. You probably need some more old white men, right? So, um, so. Uh, uh, pleasure to talk to you, Maria. Have a have a great. Thank show. you so um, much. It's great to be here as always. 
fantastic. Thank you as well, also, for your support.